this episode of Dillman vs. Wild, we explore one of the seven natural wonders of the world, a unique habitat three to six million years in the making, the Grand Canyon. to uh, embark on a huge journey down there. Down to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. You can see the different uh, layers of this canyon um, all carved out of uh, what we thought was uh, water recession um, and all the erosion from flowing water. You can see kind of the layers of sediment. This is a sedimentary um, uh, rock formation that you can see here. Um, again, you can see the layers because over time that sediment built up over top of each other and, uh, and was able to form and then the river carved out all the different features that you see. The Grand Canyon National Park was named an official national park in 1919, but the landmark had been well known to Americans for over 30 years prior. In 1903, President Theodore Roosevelt visited the site and said, The Grand Canyon fills me with awe. It is beyond comparison, beyond description, absolutely unparalleled throughout the wide world. Let this great wonder of nature remain as it is now. Do nothing to mar its grandeur, sublimity, and loveliness. You cannot improve on it, but what you can do is to keep it for your children, your children's children, and all who come after you as the one great sight which every American should see. The Grand Canyon and its extensive system of tributary canyons is valued for its combination of size, depth, and exposed layers of colorful rocks dating back to the pre-Cambrian times. The canyon itself was created by the incision of the Colorado River and its tributaries after the Colorado Plateau was uplifted, causing the Colorado River system to develop along its present path. The canyon is 277 miles long and at places 18 miles wide. The average width is 10 miles. The depth of the Grand Canyon at the south rim is 6,900 feet and at the north rim 7,800 feet, making the average depth of just over a mile. Strange came by night. Found a way out of sight. What was real? Why? 
this trail down here. You know, a little bit of it was carved by nature, but as people tried to make it, and uh, as you see, it's, it's clearly a, a path that's man-made for it. They had to break away some of these rocks, and so they would drill into the rocks, put little sticks of dynamite in there, blow a little bit of the rock out to make a little more room for us to walk down comfortably. So. color became really obvious to us. Uh, I don't know if we have it on any earlier video. We'll get it on our way back up if not. But uh, the the dust just became totally different. It's it's a much finer dust down here. Very bright red turning our, our shoes and socks uh, nice burnt orange color. Hopefully we'll, we'll get some uh, more layers on our way down and be able to show the difference of, of how some of these things settled out over the years. The geology of the Grand Canyon area exposes one of the most complete and studied sequences of rock on Earth. The nearly 40 major sedimentary rock layers exposed in the Grand Canyon and in the Grand Canyon National Park area range in age from about 200 million to nearly 2 billion years old. The Trail of Time is an outdoor geology exhibit and nature trail on the south rim of the Grand Canyon National Park. Each meter walked on the trail represents one million years of Grand Canyon's geologic history. Your muscle groups that you're using, especially going downhill, you want to try to lead with your heel so you stabilize with your quads and you use your hamstrings instead of pushing yourself forward and leaning too far forward. You sit lower, you use your glutes and your hammies, get a good knee bend, it takes the pressure off the front of your knees, and again, stabilize with your heels so you get direct pressure coming from the bottom of your heel up through here instead of over the top of your toes and causing you to go forward. We're down here in the valley, finally. Uh, hiked about three and a half, almost four miles down. Almost to our campsite, about another, oh, maybe half an hour hike. Um, you can tell uh, down here in the valley, lots more vegetation, um, more room, more area for sunlight to get, uh, for the plants to photosynthesize. Uh, maybe build better soil too down here. Um, but uh, we made it so far. on the top of its head. The other one looks like a female so far, hard to tell because it's earlier in the season. Right now these deer have velvet uh, on their uh, on their antlers right now. Um, just the time of year that they have that. They'll eventually shed that. That'll come off and scrape off to become a harder material. Um, and then that we use for uh, battling for a mate. Get it, get it. And 
and establishing territory. Pretty awesome animals right now. They're about 10 feet, 15 feet from us. Uh, obviously just munching on a few leaves to uh, get some nourishment for the day. Uh, this plant has extremely thorny um, spikes on it to defend its water source in the desert. Uh, the plants um, need to hold and retain water and this protects uh, the plant from uh, herbivores trying to take the water source from it. Victor's Oasis. Uh, obviously no diving, but uh, it's a good little creek pond. Uh, estimated temperature probably in the 50s. I don't know. But uh, it's a great place to kind of work on the muscles, give a little relaxation there. Not sure what type of frog this is. It's definitely a tree frog, probably in the phyla um, hylidae. But it's been hopping around our campsite for the past uh, oh about 20 minutes. It's uh, pitch black out, but I just heard it and uh, decided to turn on a light. And uh, there he is. It's about 6 a.m. We're starting our hike back up the canyon. Kind of got a late start this morning, but temperature's down, still cool enough for us to hike. Um, we'll see you later. that are getting ready to come through have some different containers of water. What are you guys transporting today? Uh, duffels and garbage. Duffels and garbage. One empty there. mule. And one empty mule. So, it looks like the guy in the back is a little bit lighter.
So uh, I'm here at a stopping point in the Grand Canyon, and uh, within my biology classes, we, uh, we always talk about uh, succession. Um, and this would be called a pioneer species. It is the first species on uh, inhabiting an area. These are called lichen. You can see the different, uh, the different kinds of them. There's green, yellow, lots of different colorations. Lichens are your pioneer species, the first species to inhabit an area. And you can see they're growing on this, uh, this rock here, which is really no, no major nutrients as far as soil base. They have no roots. They just grow on and, uh, and absorb what they can through the little bit of moisture that's collected in the air. See the, uh, the solar panels here, uh, perfectly directed towards gaining the most sunlight. Um, again, these are used for electricity, probably to uh, to have energy for this uh, this pump house, uh, this restroom facility for electricity. Uh, it's a little kind of hard to uh, run an electrical wire down in a Grand Canyon, so uh, we finally started using renewable energy uh, to establish. Some sort of energy resource for uh, for the people hiking on this canyon. You can see the uh, the solar panel there used to uh, house energy for that pump house. Well, I must say the uh, the hike up is much harder than the hike down, but it still has the same awesome views as the hike down. Here's some tips for uh, for hiking. Uh, definitely stay hydrated, especially in this uh, this dry, arid climate. Um, you know, every time we stop every 15 minutes or so, just to kind of take in some water. You know, uh, drench our clothing in some water to keep uh, keep that moisture and that coolness on our body temperature. Um, but uh, for the most part, it's pretty fun. Uh, this uh, the view is amazing, and uh, you can't you can't beat the experience. The Havasupai legend on the Grand Canyon Formation is richly detailed. And though some elements of it are fanciful, they bear a curious resemblance to the actual story of the survival of humankind. In this legend, the two ruling gods of the universe fell out of the deadly quarrel, and one, Hokomata, determined to drown the world. The other, Tochopa, prepared a shelter for his daughter, Pekuhe, by hollowing a tree, stocking it with provisions, and sending her inside. Then came the flood, fed by cataracts, rivers, and deluges, making a thousand times as much noise as the Colorado River that is their home. The waters rose even higher, but at least one woman was safe. Eventually the water stopped flowing, and then they breached their boundaries and rushed away, leaving the Grand Canyon behind.
Well, we made it. All uh, 14, 15 some miles of it down to the, uh, the bottom of the Grand Canyon to the Colorado River. Took a nice little dip in there on the beach, uh, hiked all the way back out. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode, Examine the Grand Canyon. See you guys next time on Dillman vs. Wild. <laughs>